Hi everybody, welcome back to the Jackalope Farm. My name is Melissa, and what I thought I would do today is share with you how I grow my microgreens. Now, I've been growing microgreens for a few years. I found it extremely beneficial for my own diet. It's very affordable after you get all your startup out of the way. And it's something that I enjoy doing, so that way I can grow something throughout the year. Now, what you're gonna, and we're gonna jump right into it, what you're gonna wanna start with is uh, you're going to want to get yourself some sort of little tray. Now, I found these uh, 12 cell trays that fit inside of another tray to be the best. And this is just my own personal experience. You can use whatever you want. But what you do want to note when you go to get your trays is that you want to be able to water from the bottom. Okay, so it's important that it has something that it's nesting in. And the reason why is, as you can see, these microgreens behind me, they're fairly fragile. So if you're watering them on top consistently, probably going to end up damaging more than than uh, doing good. So get yourself some sort of tray that nests inside of another one. The main reason why I like these 12 cell trays is because even though I have a family here with me, my husband and my boys, they don't really eat the microgreens. Like I, they will, they, they absolutely will. But this is part of my diet where I eat it daily. So I am providing myself a salad every single day of microgreens. So why is that important? Well, I want to make sure that when I have, um, when I go to harvest, that this is not necessarily regimented, but it is organized in a way that I am consuming at the same rate that I am producing. So that way I don't end up with excess and uh, there, there's very little waste. Okay. So I go for one day, I will cut three cells and that is my salad for the day. It's actually, it, for the most part, it's enough unless you're cutting them a little younger and we'll get into that. If you want to supplement, I found that I actually like to grow broccoli sprouts on the side and I will add some broccoli sprouts into this. Don't mind my puppy who really wants to go for a run right now. Come here. You're a bad dog. He just wants to go for a run right now. He's got all kinds of zoomies. Burn them up inside, huh? All right, bad habits letting them at the table. So again, get yourself some sort of growing tray that nests inside of another tray. I find that that one is beneficial because I can keep track of how much I am eating every single day. Then you're gonna have to pick some sort of substrate that you wanna grow in. Now it is possible to grow microgreens on like just a plain mat. I've never done it. I know that there are also some people online that'll say to grow them on like paper towels. I, I did try that once. I thought it was a big mess and I didn't get a whole lot out of it. So what I use is I will order the compressed bricks of coconut core. Okay. This is what they look like. They, they'll come in a big old container. You may, uh, may get a whole bunch of these, but I found that one of these bricks fits great inside of one of these two and a half gallon buckets. Okay. So once you add water, it breaks down and then you're left with a substrate that you can plant directly into. So what I do is I take the substrate and I put it right into the cells and I'll go ahead and put one together here for you. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about are seeds. And I'm not married to any one seed source. And there are a lot of seeds out there. But I will tell you, it is probably pretty important that you pick a source that is designed specifically for microgreens or sprouting. Okay? Because if you just get something that's meant to be thrown in the garden, it may not have the same um, vigor at such a young age as the seed specifically designed to be grown for microgreens or sprouts. All right, I am making a mess. All right, so you're gonna wanna compact the cells. I don't think you can really see what I'm doing here, sorry. It's oh, a little better. Okay, you want to compact the cells. You don't have to go crazy with it here, just so that way it's not, 
If you get it where you push on it and it goes all the way to the bottom, it's not going to help you out. It'll be more of a problem when the seeds start to take root. All right. Okay. So I buy my my microgreens by the pound, and this is about twenty dollars. Let me bring this back. This is about twenty dollars worth of seeds, and uh, this is Rainbow Heirloom. They have non-GMO heirloom varieties are available, and I get these right off of Amazon, so they're really convenient to order, and I've been really happy with them. This is what I've been using for going on three years now. So one bag lasts me over a year, and that's just for one person, though. Keep in mind, this is not like I'm not commercial sales or even feeding a family of four, I'm feeding myself. So you can multiply this by however many people that you actually want to supply and also Understand, I am eating a salad every single day, just a side salad with my lunch every single day that I have grown. So this is a um, the, what they call their superfood microgreen mix. It has broccoli, purple kohlrabi, radish, collard, and uh, turnips in it. Now, these are all things that I actually don't eat in their full size. So I found it beneficial to sneak it into my diet in a way that I will eat it, which is in microgreen form. If you don't know the benefits of microgreens, I'm not going to pretend to be able to rattle them all off and be completely accurate. So please do your research as to why you would want to add microgreens to your diet. I will tell you that personally, I have had zero regrets doing so. Um, they have a ton of other mixes, though, if you want to check out Rainbow Heirloom on Amazon. And they're all about $20 for a pound. But I'm telling you, it's going to last a while, okay? But again, there are other seed companies out there. You don't have to go with the one I'm using for any reason. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little teaspoon out here and I am going to sprinkle seeds into each cell. Now, I'm not going to go nuts with this, just enough. And I'll show you it in a second. A little bit does go a long way here. I'm just tapping the seeds out of the spoon into the cells. Otherwise, you will definitely have a mess. All right. So I can pick this up and show you. All right. See all the seeds in the top there? So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to cover each one of these with just a little bit. A little bit of soil here. It's still the same substrate that I've been using, so please don't get confused just because I said soil. I understand it's coconut core. So every four days, I make a new tray. because each tray gives me four days worth of food. Okay, so once I get that layer on the top, oh, sorry. Okay, I'm gonna take a spray bottle just full of water and I'm going to spray each one of these cells three, four times because what I'm doing is I am working the seeds into that top layer of substrate. And this will also be enough water to get it through its germination phase without me having to mess with it at all. Now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put an object on top of it that is, it's actually just a stack of these extra white trays that I have, and I'll put those on top. And what that is, is it, it has enough weight on there to force the seed, the little seedlings, as it's germinating, to spend majority of its energy actually rooting versus 
sending up these big old spindly shoots right away that aren't going to do me any good. And this is going to go into one of my kitchen cabinets where it's in total blackout for the first four days. And that allows it to germinate and then set up the plant so it's uh, a little stronger. Okay. And what it looks like after four days is this. And this has not been exposed to really any sunlight at all, except when we come and go from that cabinet. And it doesn't look like much right now. This has not been watered yet. So this was able to do everything. It was able to grow all of this just based on the water that I just showed you that I sprayed into it. Okay. Um, so you will want to lift up the corner just underneath your sink and fill some water up. Don't go crazy. Just enough that the soil blocks are going to be um, filled with water because they're relatively dry on the bottom because we only watered the top. Okay, so that's what it looks like after four days. Now, let me get the seed bag closed up because otherwise I will not get over. All right, now what I have behind me is actually how I grow them out. Now I used to have, I used to just keep the tray on the kitchen counter like this at our old house. That's how I started. Okay. And what I found was I did not enjoy eating them when I left them on the counter. When I have two small boys in the house in a kitchen with <clears throat> them making a mess. And let's just say it probably wasn't the most sanitary thing. So I would highly recommend that you get something to put it in. Okay. This just happens to be a 10 gallon fish tank, completely clean. All right. It's not like I had fish in this, but what I'm using it for is to keep the trays in so they're staying in a much more sterile environment. I clean this out every time I take a tray out. I wipe it down and clean it again just so that way, because you will get um, some of the coconut core will fall out. Some of the uh, seedlings will fall out and you don't want that to build up and make a mess in there. All right. So these are, this one would be eight days old. This one would be Math is hard. 12 days old, and this one is approaching 16 where it's almost completely empty. There's only one more row in here. I'll take that out for you in a second because I got to make my, my lunch anyway. So I'll cut that for you and show you what I do to just clean off any extra little debris that may have been stuck to that. As for lighting, this is actually a uh, an, an aquarium light. They're cheaper than grow lights. They don't put off hardly any heat. And on top of it, these lights are made to grow plants underwater. So they're going to grow your plants out of water. It, it still works just fine. I used to really be into aquariums and I would do aquascaping as a hobby. So when I had an extra light bar laying around after I got out of it, because when we moved, we didn't move with all those things. So I just put it to good use. It was a way to save money. Okay. So you can do what you want. But I would highly recommend that you come up with something to keep your seedlings in so that they don't turn into a mess on you. Others, you're really probably not going to enjoy eating them. All right, I'm going to get this out of here and into the kitchen and I'll show you what I do next. All right, welcome to the kitchen. So, as I said, every day I cut one row of three cells, okay? And what I'm left with are these little guys. And we'll talk about what I do with the waste after, after I get through this. But this is the last row on this tray. So I'm going to cut that out really quick. And all I do is I just take a knife. Grab a hold of the clump I want to cut. To make sure I get as much of the coconut core off of it as possible. I highly recommend you get yourself a salad spinner, okay? So I've got this into my salad spinner. That's how much I got from one row. We're going to rinse this out. Just 
just getting any extra little dirt off of there. Into the spinner. and dried greens for a salad. All right, so that's that. Now, what do I do with the excess? Well, each one of these cells will pop out fairly simple. And you can see there's a significant amount of stem and root structure that's still gonna be in each one of these blocks. I, I keep quail and they love to pick at stuff and they eat microgreens and sprouts that I have in excess, I give to them. This gives them something to do, especially in winter when I'm not putting them out in the snow because I am in Wisconsin, this works great. So I give them all of these blocks, just toss them into their, their pen and they scratch them, pick the, the roots out, the stems out, and they absolutely love it. So that way I'm not having a whole bunch of excess. And then when that breaks down further, it goes into their drop pan, which goes into the compost pile, which goes back into the garden. So it comes full circle, at least here. So that's it for microgreens. I hope you like this. It is very simple to do. And again, startup cost, $20 bag of seeds, whatever you decide to spend on trays. I think this a pack of six of these probably cost me $15 at most. And that's because I went with the ones that were a little thicker so I could get my, my money out of them. I've been using the same trays for three years. I haven't had to replace a single one, a single one yet. And uh, I had an extra fish tank and uh, an aquarium light. So that didn't cost me anything extra because it was something I already possessed. So I highly recommend that you get creative and just and do that because if you're going to buy a $20 bag of seeds, some blocks of coconut core, which by the way, also don't cost much. I'm sorry. I don't remember exactly how much they were, but it's pennies. It's, it's not much for what I'm using. Um, you put all that together and then you're getting more than a year's worth of food for one person out of that initial investment. It just makes sense. So give it a try. I hope you like it. Let me know what you think and have a good day. Take care.